Welcome back to part five of building a mean app with Azure's Cosmos DB. I'm John Papa, and this time I'm going to build an express API that talks to Cosmos DB. Now that I have all the pieces of mean, we've got our Mongo database, Express for our APIs, Angular for the UI, and Node for our platform, we need to connect all these pieces together and actually talk to the database up in Cosmos DB. So first, let's pull in the API that I would normally use to talk to Mongo, and that's called Mongoose. So I'm going to do npm i install Mongoose, do dash save. Now once I have that, I'm going to go create a file inside my app under a server called Mongo. Now this is a file where I'm going to do all my like connection type things to the database. First, I'm going to require Mongoose, and then I'm going to override the Mongo promises because we should just use basic promises that are built into ES6 or ES2015 and above. And based upon my environment, I like to have a file called environment, which lets me set up certain things based upon whether I'm in staging or prod or dev. So I'm going to set up that file here, and we'll create that file soon. So I'll have to make a to-do to come back to that. Next, we're going to need our Mongo URI. That's going to be our connection string. And the format for that is going to be using template strings. So we can do a replacement in here. We'll say MongoDB. And then we'll use the curly braces here for ENV, and that's going to be the database name. And then we'll use another one here for the key. That's generally going to be your password to talk to it. And then once again, we'll use the environment database name. It'll be part of the URL we have to talk to, and it's going to be documents.azure.com. And then finally, we're going to use the port that we're going to be using. That's going to be also in the environment. Now we're talking over the internet, so we want this to be secure. So I'm absolutely going to want to put in here as well at the end, SSL equals true. We'll pop this in so ESLint doesn't bark at us for making that long connection string line. Now even though it's long, it's going to be a little more helpful and usable because we've got these replacement values in there. Next up, we have to have a way to talk to and connect to the database. So I'm going to create a function called connect, and we're simply going to call Mongoose, which really does all the work for us. None of the covers just using the native NPM drivers for Mongo. We'll put in our Mongo URI, and then for one of our options, we'll say use Mongo client and set that to true, and then we'll expose the function as part of our exports. Okay, we've got this file we didn't create yet, so let's go create a folder over here called env, and then inside of there, we're going to create a file called environment. We had a couple things over in that other file that we need to replace. The database name, the key, and then also the Cosmos port. Let's create the values of these variables here first, and we'll fill them in in just a moment. First, we'll need a port, and it's not going to be 1234, but we'll put that in. And then we'll go ahead and create the database name, and our database name is whatever our database happens to be called, so you put your database there. My database is my Cosmos Heroes, and then I also need my key value. This will be the primary master key that Cosmos gives us. You can go to the portal to find this or through your CLI. So that's where your key is going to go. We'll put that as a replacement and you're going to have to replace that with your value. I'll show you how to get that in a moment. So then we can do module exports because we have to export these values. So how do we get that connection string information? Well, we're going to come over to our terminal and then you would type in this command using the Azure CLI. When you run this command, you're going to get the key information. It's a big long string and you can plop that in here for your key. And then you're also going to get your port. For example, you might get a port of 10250. You'll put that up into here. And whatever your key happens to be, you'll put that right down there. Now, if we go back to our Mongo file, these variables should work. And the way you can check this out in VS Code, if we rename them right, is you can hover over them, and it would show you where they are in the other file. You can also click on them, and it'll go right to that file. Now we can remove the to-do and close that file. Next, we don't want to explicitly configure the list of heroes, remember. We want to hit up to Cosmos DB. So we're going to create another file in here. This file is going to be a model for our heroes. We're going to create hero model JS. Once again, we're going to require mongoose, and we're going to pull in the schema. So we're going to create a new schema for this model. This will make it easier for us to manipulate the models. So I'm going to create a hero schema here. It's going to be a new schema, and what we pass to that is going to be an object literal. And the first one's going to have the properties and then the types of those. So the first one's going to be a property of type number, and it's going to be required. And then I'm going to have a name, which will be a string, and we're going to have a saying, which is going to be a string. And this just models what we've been doing in the UI all along. So we flip back over to our data. We had a number for ID, name is Star-Lord, and the saying is, oh yeah. The name of our model, we can go ahead and do now first. We're going to create an instance of that. We're going to call it Hero. So we're going to say, go ahead and create this model using this schema. The name of it is Hero, like that in the string. And then here's the plans for it. And then we're going to export this. Now, one of the things with Mongoose is that it pluralizes the name of the model into the collection. So the thing it would do here is it take hero, and it would make it heroes just by adding an S. Well, that's not how we actually spell it. So I'm going to override that. 
And here I'm going to say, all right, take the collection and just name this collection Heroes. Now we have a model for our heroes, but because I want our routes to basically handle all the routing for Express, and then I've got a separate file for handling Mongoose, and I've got a file that handles the schema for the hero, what I really want to do to make this more extensible is to create a file that's going to handle all the data manipulation. So instead of putting that inside of the routes, because that's not really what routes do, they're just routing, and putting it inside of like a hero model, because that's just a single model, I'm going to create one other file. That's going to be called Hero Service. And as you might imagine, you might have multiple services in your app, one for each different type of model if you'd like. So what do we do inside of this service? Well, first, we want to go get that model that we have. So here's our hero model. Next, inside the service, since we want to connect to the Mongo database, let's just make our lives easy, and we'll go ahead and do that. And now we'll create a function that goes and gets our heroes. So I'm going to create a doc query variable. And what we want to do is use the hero find method. And we're going to tell it to find all of them. This is part of the Mongoose API. That defines the query, but it doesn't execute it. So now we can say doc query dot exec. And that's got a promise. So we can say then, and we're going to get back, hopefully, a list of heroes. When we get that list back, we want to tap into the response and say response status. And that's going to be 200. And then we're going to say the JSON that we're going to pass back is going to be the heroes itself. OK, but what if it doesn't work? Well, we can do a catch statement as well. And the catch statement, we'll use a lambda here. We'll do a res.status, and that's going to be 500. And we'll send back the error message. And we could reformat there to do something else more interesting. And I'm using Prettier to format my code, which is a nice extension for VS Code, which helps format my code based upon my own preferences. Now at the bottom, because we're doing modules, we have to say, go ahead and get heroes. We're going to expose that. So now we have a way of getting our heroes. OK, that's great. Now back in the routes, what do we do with this? We already have heroes here. We need to connect with that hero service. So we're going to go out and do hero service dot get heroes. Now, why am I not getting Telsense? Because I haven't actually gotten the hero service yet. So I'll have to do const hero service, require. And what do we name that file? Hero.service. Now, if I came back down here and I did the dot, you would see that there's the property. Now, I need to pass in the request and response because maybe I'll do something with those inside of this service. In this case, I'm going to pass them in. I'm going to add those as parameters. So that's why I can do the query, and then I can say, all right, I've got the response object. I can send it out here. And then we go back into our routes. So let's walk through the chain real quick. First, we come into the index. This is what sets up the Express server. And notice that that's setting up and defining our routes on line 13. And our routes file will then talk to our hero service and say, OK, let's go get our functions, like get heroes. And we're going to pass and request and response. The hero service is going to grab the model and connect to Mongo. And then it's going to execute, when we call it, the get heroes function to give our data and then return back a response of 200. And then it'll bubble back out through the chain. Well, we've added a few files here. We can see them all over on the left. And we've got that environment file as well. Make sure you replace it with your keys, remember, when you run this yourself. Now I should be able to run this debugger. Let's go check it out in our browser. Now, if we have any bugs, the good news is we have a debugger and we can learn what's going on. Here, when I run the app, I'm going to open the developer tools and go over to the network tab. I'm going to refresh it. We can see we tried to get heroes and we got a 500 error. Nothing showed up. Well, it says the hero is not defined, and that is on line six of hero service. OK, let's go back over here. We'll go into line six of the hero service. And notice right there we've got heroes lowercase. It's supposed to be uppercase. So we can change that to an uppercase H. I then have to either stop and restart my server, or I could just do the restart. Otherwise, uh, Node's not going to pick up the change, unless I use something like Nodemon. All right, so now we've got restarted. I can go back to my browser. I should be able to refresh. And this time, it got the hero successfully. Now, there are no heroes yet. But our next step, we're going to go ahead and create the inserts, updates, and deletes with our Mongoose connections to our Cosmos database. You can check that out in the next video of my series.